while he is mine. Good morning, Dora. Is it really? Morning, Hetty. Are you all right? I didn't do it. It wasn't me. Of course it wasn't you. We know that. Why aren't you up and dashing, up and dashing? I mean, there is no point in me running this place for you wayward persons if all I'm going to produce is people who don't speak. You must make some kind of progress. You must try and break off this relationship with your umbrella. <laughs> progress, girl, progress. Get another umbrella if you must. <laughs> up and dashing, Dora, up and dashing. He's up there, Dora. Oh, yes, he's up there. And if you don't use what he gives you, he'll take it back. In other words, Dora, he that doth not useth what he giveth, he taketh away. <laughs> he leads me to... Good morning, Chancy. Close your mouth. Oh, morning, Mr. Tilston. Ah, Lena, would you ring? Uh, I didn't quite catch the number. Was it male or female? It was male. Husky and not to be recommended. <laughs> it's Eddington. I'll just die. I know I will. Yes, well, don't forget to replace the receiver before you do, or you'll block incoming calls. <laughs> Dora, someone called Duncan is ringing this afternoon. Couldn't say when. Sounded devious to me. Probably a Sagittarian. <laughs> Chancy, ex-husbands two and three rang. Second wants to know if he can borrow the car for the weekend. Third wants to know if you will be in the flat on Sunday. His mother... <sighs> Who wants to borrow it? Were you on lunches yesterday, Dora? Uh, yeah. I would like the recipe for that globule you dished up under the guise of apple sponge. The back gate needs a doorstop. <laughs> Morning, sweetness. I hate that word, sweetness. Makes us sound like fruit drinks. Time of the month, is it? Or am I talking of the golden days of long ago? I'm 35, for God's sake. Nature hasn't blown my candle out yet. If we could leave aside matters biological for a moment, I have good news. I have had a letter from the council. Straighten yourselves up. You look as if you need scaffolding. That's better. The letter says, Dear Mrs. Tilston, in view of your prestigious qualifications, and what are they, may I ask? Five, Five years, years as a ward sister in a mental hospital, hospital and a degree in psychology and, and philosophy. With... Honours. Honours. Thank you. We have great pleasure in informing you that the Sunfield Voluntary Therapy Centre will receive the agreed financial support of your local authority. We wish you every success in the worthy cause of caring for those with special psychological needs. That's you. Is that another way of saying we're daft? No, Dora, daft is not a word we like to use here. Right. As you know, this is an experimental venture, one which I have long dreamed of. My own mother suffered in the same way as you. In fact, by the time she was 40, she was completely doolally. And in her case, the direct cause was my father. So when her house became mine, it was my wish to use it to help others who were... Doolally. ...similarly disadvantaged. Oh, do loosen your belt, Millie. We all know you've got a waist here, but tightening it like that only forces all the other things you've got on us. <laughs> so, up and dashing, then. And leave those feet in ancient. Mustn't waste. He who wastes once. Good God, she never stops, does she? Dash, dash, dash. Her ovaries must be clanking together like a pair of castanets. <laughs> oh. Oh. It says here, scientists have discovered that man's sperm count is down. Good. As long as they can keep everything else down, we'll be all right. <laughs> You're wearing my scent. I'm not wearing any scent. Yes, you are. You're wearing mine. She's wearing my scent. She left her door open. So I'm not allowed to leave my door open, is that it? Well, it's not very thoughtful, is it? I mean, you're in here because you have a mania for pulling communication cords. I don't come charging past you every five minutes in a train, do I? <laughs> Millie, look. Man's sperm count is done. I will not have it. I absolutely will not have it. It doesn't bother me anyway. I discovered a long time ago that sex was the most ridiculous thing we do. Only if you're watching it, not if you're doing it. By the way, I'd rather have a good sneeze. Right. From now on, I will lock my door, my window, my handbag. My entire existence will be motivated by locks and keys. Try locking your gob while you're up. <laughs> Look. I know you have been depressed since the day of your conception. 
But that doesn't give your gob the right to tell my gob what to do. Dora, did you hear me saying man's sperm count is down? Pollution, they say. Who says? The scientists. Oh, them? Nasty little boys pulling wings off the planet. <laughs> it must be nice to be old. It means you come in when everything was beautiful and you'll be going out again before everything becomes unbearable. Oh, I don't know. Then aren't what they used to be. All three of my exes could have procreated while going around the Cape on a hang glider. <laughs> What's she in here for? Does anybody know? Hetty, what are you in here for? Come on, Hetty. We're all mates in here. It was someone else, not me. Hetty, look. Millie nicks useless things. Lena pulls communication cords. First class, of course. Dora throws herself out of windows. And you keep battering your ex-husbands. Yeah, yeah, OK, OK. So what's your problem? They know, they know who it was. Right. Everything is locked. Instead of being a balanced, happy person, I have been plunged into a deep abyss of despair. Welcome to my world. I know now why people like us do the things we do. We are beset by the disappointments inflicted upon us by our own kind. We are dragged through life by the rope of ill fate. We are teased by circumstance. We are oh, shut up, you moaning cow. <laughs> you thought we'd left the shitty word outside behind us? Well, we haven't. We're a product of it, so we have brought it in with us. And that, my little pain in the arse friend, is that. With all thy might. Hey-ho, are we all ready then? Ready for what? Whatever he sends, whatever gift he gives us. Look out there. What do you see? Clouds. Clouds, exactly. And what else? Rain. Right. Clouds and rain, and aren't we lucky? Some people can't see the clouds. Some people can't walk in the rain. You can do both, so aren't you lucky? You've got too much makeup on. You look like an old dahlia. <laughs> Matalina. We were in the middle of a conversation about the dilemma of life. Dilemma? There is no dilemma. Life is a rainbow. Right, here we go, into the day, up and dashing. <laughs> Do I hear silence? What did I say? Up, up, and, oh, dash. up and dashing. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Carter. Do come in. This is Mr. Daniel Carter. He is going to spend the next six weeks giving counsel as and when you need it, and he will also be doing therapy. Here is your flock, Mr. Carter. Can I introduce you? That is Chansey. Hello. Millie. All right. Keep your hips still, Millie. Lena. Great, fabulous, fantastic. Hi. And Dora. It's Daronia, actually. It's a gypsy name. And over there we have Hetty. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. I'll explain Hetty to you later. Meanwhile, I will show you round. It's only a small place, but it is well blessed. This way. What's all this crap about Daronia? A girl should always keep one card up her knicker leg. <laughs> the reason you never saw me, Bill, is because you were too pissed to see anyone. I was always here, even when you said you had a three-day seminar in Venice. I was here! And what were you doing? Bonking your way from one end of the Grand Canal to the other... Oh, shut up! Look, I'm sick of all three of you. Just leave me alone! Do come in. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were in here. I was just, uh... Hiding? Yes, hiding. <clears throat> can I help? No one can help. I'm a mess. Do you want to talk? No. Nope. Do you want me to talk? No. Nope. Would you mind if I read mine? No. I can't seem to keep anyone. People, men, I mean, leave me. So you do want to talk? No, I don't. <laughs> They say they love me, but they don't want to be with me, and I don't know why. I've had three husbands. Three. That is rather a lot, yes. Mm. What did you do with them all? I duffed them up. <laughs> did they live? You trying to be funny? I was, yes. Well, I'd give it up if I were you. 
Look, I'm in here with a view to getting hold of myself. I'm trying not to be aggressive, and I know I can do it if I'm left alone. The problem is, you see, that I can't stand men. When men were put on this earth, Mother Nature made the mistake of giving them balls. Now, I call that favouritism. Well, she had to give them to someone, I suppose. Well, so she could have given us one each. <laughs> she gave you other things. Like, for instance, well, handbags. <laughs> Whenever I see a demolition squad bringing down a building with that great big dome of steel, I'm reminded of men's balls. Because that's what they do to you, isn't it? They demolish you! I bloody hate you! I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! I bloody hate you! I'm sorry I had a relapse. <laughs> Are you all right, then? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you? She said she's fine. Why, Chauncey? Why do you keep doing yes, it? Yes, why, that? I've just asked her that. What? Doing what? I mean, three ex-husbands, not even proper husbands, ex-husbands. <laughs> and you beat them all up. I mean, why? No, well, I know why. <laughs> you know nothing. They keep bothering me. What do you mean, love? She means they keep bothering her. But why do you keep seeing them? Just stay away. God knows it's simple enough. Just stay away. They won't stay away. Why, love? You've just asked her that. <laughs> why? Because I'm living in Bill's flat, I'm driving Derek's car, and I'm getting maintenance from Stephen. Well, that's a funny arrangement, isn't it? With all three of just, them. Just I... listen. Will you just listen? That's a funny arrangement. <laughs> Yes, it is, but then life is funny, isn't it? Well, what's going to happen to you then, Chauncey? How does she know what's going to happen to her? I mean, how does she know a thing like that? So what are your plans, then? Oh, something, I expect. Maybe someone nice will turn up, sort me out. How's the cat? Fine. The canary? Fine. The rabbit? Fine. You forgot the gerbil. How's the gerbil? Dead. Dead? Gone. How? Old age. He was only six months old. Must have been something else then. Karen sends her love. Thanks. And Duncan. Do you remember Duncan? I should do. I'm engaged to him. Why hasn't he come? He said he would come tomorrow. He has some business to see to. Do you like the colour of my lipstick? I mean, it's easy to phone, for God's sake. Pink Sin. Honestly, where do they get these names from? I mean, Sin is more of a dark colour, isn't it? You know, like lust red or adulterous orange. So what sort of business has Duncan gone to see to then? Well, I bought this yesterday. Black Lash. Frames your eyes with ebony lashes. Wondrous luster. Adds length and thickness to underprivileged eyes. Great. Will you ask Duncan to film me then? I will, yeah. I bought this. Iced peach to make pale cheeks interesting. I would have bought you some, but you have to have cheekbones. <laughs> well, I think you ought to say something. After all, she is your daughter. You are her father. And it is visiting time. We are visitors, and she is being visited. She's talked to you. It's your turn to talk to her. What she needs is response, repartee. You are her father. She is your daughter. And another thing... All right, all right. Well, if it wasn't you, who was it then? <laughs> Had a good life, Mr Carter. A good and joyous life. That's nice to hear. I have no complaints. <laughs> He's been very kind to me. He? Why, he? Who else? He up there. Oh, yes, of course. I'm sorry. I would have liked to have got married, of course, and had children. But I have been too busy. No time, Mr Carter, no time. Actually, I thought you were married, being as you... Call myself Mrs. Mm. It's a ploy, Mr Carter, a ploy. After all, one has to keep the marauding males at bay, doesn't one? 
I would have liked to have been prettier. I can't think why. You're a very handsome woman. The pretty ones always get the pick of the bunch, don't they? And I have never fancied what was left. <laughs> Not that anyone ever asked. Mr Gillespie came near it, I suppose. He used to come and have tea with me every day at four o'clock. But nothing lasts, does it? And he did have asthma. <laughs> Still, on we go, up and dashing. <laughs> Eternal Father, strong to save. My mother is like a little tent peg sitting there while my father hammers her into the ground. <laughs> my fella can't even bury a gerbil properly. The cat dug it up, has been under the bed with it all morning. <laughs> I don't know why she stays. Why does she stay? Eddington's car broke down. He did ring. He always rings. He really is very good at ringing. I hate visiting. Reminds me what it's like out there. Well, sometimes he's good at ringing. You too, time and bastard, Duncan. How about you, Dora? Oh, fine. No problems. <laughs> Had a great laugh with my best mate. Sorry, am I disturbing you? Yes, you are, but that's what I'm here for, isn't it? <laughs> I'm feeling, um, I'm feeling muddled. I've already had a word with him. He was out. He's never out, Chancy. Busy, perhaps, but never out. So, what's bothering you? Oh, I don't know. It's my parents, I suppose. Well, my mother, really. She is rendered rather ineffective by your father, isn't she? Fate has gifted him with the personality of a bulldozer. Is she ever allowed to get a whole sentence out? No. <laughs> so, her brain must be glutted up with endless stillborn observations. Does she have headaches? What's causing my aggression? Is it genetic? Or am I making up for my mother's silence? The first step is accepting what we are, Chancy, irrespective of how we came to it. And you could well be another bulldozer who could well end up married to another harmless little wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow? Someone who doesn't mind being pushed. <laughs> Unlike, say, Mr. Carter. Mr. Carter? What's Mr. Carter got to do with it? You know, Chancy, I had a lover. Not, you understand, one of these love at first sight things, oh no. We shook hands for years. But when it came, it came with a big bang. I am, of course, using the word bang metaphorically. How do you know, Mr. Carter? So you see, Chancy, one learns through one's own passions to recognise the passions of others. Well, I've only spoken to him twice. One sees nothing, hears nothing and says nothing in the desperate hope that it will come to nothing. Right. Now we've sorted out what's really bothering you, why don't we have a cup of tea and waste our time talking about the things you said were bothering you? <laughs> All you've got to do is get the gerbil off the cat. I mean, it's hardly a gargantuan task, is it? Then you'll have to go into the wardrobe after her, won't you? It's no use barking and pretending to be a dog, Gerald. She'll end up on the roof the way she did with the stuffing out of the Christmas turkey. Be firm. Give me that gerbil, you must say. Yeah, look, look, I've got to go, Gerald. No, I'll ring you later. Bye-bye. Oh, God, he's stupid. I suppose I'd better phone Eddington. I'm just worried I might make you miss Duncan's call. Oh, don't you worry. Duncan's a very determined man. If you're on too long, he'll squirt poison down the mouth. <laughs> that gerbil will have fossilised in one of my hats by the time I get home. Hello? Hello, Eddington. Where are you? Breaking down is no excuse. You could have phoned. If I were in the desert, I would find a way to phone you. Look, if you don't bloody well want to see me, bloody well say so. Eddington? <laughs> I have always thought of myself as a strong person with 
good sense and integrity, but he... He reduces me to a mindless blob. They're all the same, love. Liars and cheats. It's their wobbly bits. <laughs> it's like being attached to a gigantic dog on a lead. Where it goes, they go. <laughs> Duncan's seeing my best friend. I saw her getting onto his bike. Dora, that's awful. Oh, it's all right. The kissed. It could have been a friendly kiss. It was a long, wet, gob and gulfin kiss. <laughs> One of those. <laughs> They're all the same. Maybe not all of them. But Duncan isn't like the rest. He's different. He's thoughtful and honest and sincere and... Oh, piss off, Duncan! <laughs> I know I seem snobby and aloof, but when it comes to love, we are all equal. I have exactly the same pain as you, ordinary people. Oh, I don't know the answer. Well, we've been let down by everybody. There's no one left. It's funny. I never really trusted men with beards. Can you feel anything? Freezing, basically. Anything spiritual no. no it's all very posh isn't it it wasn't short of a bob or two reminds me of mummy's bathroom <laughs> in the west wing <laughs> well slightly it's the windows mainly <laughs> come to think of it i do feel comforted somehow you know as if I found a new friend. Does this mean you'll be leaping about in a tracksuit with I'm his, his mine written on it? Well, I don't know, dear. I've only been religious for five minutes. What I feel is a sort of tranquility. It's washing over me and Eddington is slowly fading away. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I don't feel angry anymore. Duncan can just... fade away. <laughs> You're married to them that don't just fade away. They get bigger and uglier and even bigger till eventually you fade away. Forever and ever, amen. Right, now you're all cleansed, let's go home. I'm dead hungry. I feel as if I'm embarking on a new adventure. No, not another marriage, please. <laughs> she said an adventure, not a bloody catastrophe. No, a journey different from the rest. I'm sorry. Really sorry. Good night, Mr. Gillespie.